the biggest peak in the development of new telematic services in Europe is for connected navigation services. Um, this could be destination centre car, as we've heard previously. It could be a local search within the car through the Google database. Uh, it could be uh, advanced traffic information being sent to the car over a GPRS or a 3G connection. But this is really where most vehicle manufacturers are focusing their attention at the minute for telematics. You can see that very few vehicle manufacturers, only one or two, are actively considering e-call if they don't have to do it for legislation. And that really echoes the previous presentation from Phil that if e-call is in the car, then it's a nice feature for customers, but they, don't act they won't actively go out and choose to pay for it. Whereas the feeling is that for connected navigation, there is some opportunity to offer some very attractive services to customers. And possibly they will be bundled free, or there might be an opportunity to make some small charges to the customer. So regardless of, of what services are required, um, we think there's a number of key challenges that vehicle manufacturers are going to face in trying to develop telematic services. And, and I'm going to go through these um, relatively quickly, but I've just got one slide to talk about each, each aspect of developing telematics. The first one is looking at the right partners. So we, we've spoken a lot, or um, a number of presentations have, have looked at the, the partner network that is required to develop telematic services, whether it's in China, in Japan, or Europe, vehicle manufacturers on their own cannot do telematics. They need a network of partners. And we can see, um, I've identified six groups that are involved potentially in developing and in deploying telematic services. And just very quickly, we, if we look at the, the network operators, uh, I mentioned in a previous presentation for China what some of those network operators are doing to try and make themselves more attractive to vehicle manufacturers who want to choose a strong partner for telematics, um, usually with some kind of machine-to-machine -machine special infrastructure or special services. Um, if I jump to the DCM suppliers, um, these are a mixture of some of the, 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 the large tier one suppliers from Europe, from Japan, um, but we can also already see some changes in the, in the market situation. So Autoliv, previously was a supplier of telematics DCMs for Volvo, but now it has sold its telematics business to a French company called Actia because it was moving away, telematics is moving away from Autoliv's core business of safety and security, and we're moving more towards connected navigation, entertainment, infotainment. And I think one of the big challenges for these, these players in the value chain is, uh, is how to manage the app stores and the downloading new content to the vehicle during the life of the vehicle, not just the content, but new applications and features. And these manufacturers, these tier one suppliers, are really trying to struggle to understand what type of software platform they should be using. Should they be adopting Google Android or some kind of Linux-based platform, Nokia Symbian? Um, I, I think over the next two or three years, we'll see a lot of developments in this area for people trying to develop new platforms for telematics. Just jumping a couple of steps further is the call center. Um, the call center is going to be critical for services such as private e-call and b-call, but it's also one of the highest cost parts of the value chain for telematics in Europe. Traditionally, we've, we've had a, a call center in every country. Um, so there's been a network of maybe 10, 12, 15 call centers to provide local language support to people wherever they are in Europe. But we're seeing a change um, led by companies like SEI, where, the, where for BMW they are developing a single call center in Germany where they will have multinational staff in the same call center to handle calls from different countries across Europe. So all across the value chain, people are having to look at what new features are coming along in the future, how can they make their part of the value chain more cost effective, and how can they try to win as much business by providing exactly the type of support that vehicle manufacturers need for telematics. I think the second key area of interest uh, is always the, the business model for telematics. This is probably the, 
probably the most critical item or the biggest reason why so many vehicle manufacturers have had so many problems in providing telematic services in Europe. Many services were developed as a great technical idea, but when they tried to market it and make a, an offering to the customer, the cost was so high that the customers just didn't value the services enough to be willing to pay for it. So I think before any car manufacturer goes too far with telematics, they really need to work out what is their business model going to be and how are they going to offer it to the customer. Will they expect the customer to pay for it and how will they collect that money? And I think it's very clear that services such as e-call, the customers will not pay. They will expect e-call to be bundled into the price of the vehicle or the price of the system for the life of the car. So car manufacturers are then having to go through the value chain and negotiate with telematic service providers, with network operators and call centre op center providers to find the best way of paying and pricing for those services over the life of the vehicle. We, then, we also have services that maybe would last for a certain life, a certain number of years of the vehicle, so stolen vehicle tracking. For a high value vehicle, it might be, there might be some customers who are willing to pay for this for two or three years. But when the value of the vehicle drops below a certain value, it's quite likely that they will stop paying for SVT or the insurance companies will stop requiring them to have SVT. So we need a very flexible business model that looks at the applications, looks at the partners involved in telematics and tries to work out who's paying who, where does the money come from and how can everybody try to make a business from telematics. I think another serious problem that has been underestimated within the, the car manufacturers so far has been trying to modify their organisation. To, to manage and to deal with telematics. So tele traditionally car manufacturers, they design a piece of hardware, it goes into the car, and then it stays in the car for 10 years, but they get the money from the customer once when they sell the car. Telematics is really a lifetime service to the vehicle, and it, it's something that is a little bit alien to most car manufacturers, is how to manage this lifetime service, who should take responsibility for it, is it a product planning issue? Is it a customer service issue? Is it a technical issue? And really it's all of those. But the structure of the vehicle manufacturer makes it very difficult for those organisations all to work together effectively. So I think we'll start to see more and more manufacturers ad adapting their internal organisation to take account of the special requirements for offering telematic services as well as the hardware in the vehicle. And they will do this by making special telematic groups cross-function groups which um, are involved right from the concept all the way through to supporting those services through the life of the vehicle on the road. And then deploying telematics across Europe, it's not just one country, it's not two or three countries, but potentially it's up to 27, 30 different countries. Each country maybe has different legislation, different languages, different customer requirements. So Europe is always going to be a very difficult place to launch services. And one of the, the critical components in the puzzle for how to do telematics will be to get the support of the local sales and marketing company for the vehicle manufacturer in each country. So they need to be very much involved in the early planning stages. They should be the ones that know their customers the best. They should be aware of what the requirements are in each country. And the car manufacturer traditionally has developed a car and then given it to the sales company to sell. I think with telematics, the sales company has to be much more involved in the development of telematics. And again, this is going to be one of the big changes that needs to take place for telematics to succeed. The key activity at the minute is waiting to see what will happen with eCall, whether it will be mandated or not. Whatever happens, we know that car manufacturers are developing their own services based around electric vehicle telematics, around connected navigation telematics. Um, but if we are really going to see the millions of vehicles with uh, an embedded telephone module, then it's more, the most likely solution is going to be some kind of mandatory e-call. And then it will be up to car manufacturers um, with the vision to see what telematics can do for them to see that as an opportunity, what more can they do once they, have to do once they have to fit telematics, what can they do with it, rather than seeing it as a cost burden to say, well, we've got to do it, but we'll do the minimum necessary to meet their requirements.